Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. Today on Chronicle. I think everybody's very much aware of autism at this point in time, but we would like to just continue to provide acceptance and autonomy. We take a look at life on the spectrum, from the challenges to the triumphs. He's also expressing himself in ways that he really probably never had an opportunity to in the past. Putting together the puzzle, people with autism are connecting to classmates, entering the workforce and shaping their lives. I do feel like I'm part of a part of a group and not just not just with people with disabilities, but to others as well. As Autism Awareness Month wraps up, we look at advancements in our local community that empower those with autism. Anything is possible. The only limit is your imagination. Good morning, I'm Julie Cornell. Autism spectrum disorder affects one in 59 children in the United States today. And as its national symbol, the puzzle piece reminds us no two experiences are the same for most, the journey begins at an early age. And while an autism diagnosis can initially be overwhelming for families, groups like the Autism Society of Nebraska are helping ease the transition with a little bit of fun. Now, earlier this month, they hosted this event. The Omaha Fun Fest at the Ralston Arena. They had bounce houses and face painting. Some favorite characters were there. But with all the fun came an important message. We would like to just continue to provide acceptance and autonomy and just um, letting other people know that while they may look or think slightly different, that's okay because we all look and think slightly different from each other. The event wrapped up with a three-mile puzzle walk. They raised more than $35,000. And though the Fun Fest is over, the Autism Society keeps the enjoyment going year-round. They have events like the sensory movie screenings, bowling leagues, and bounce nights. Lots of fun. Well, the fun can continue at school, too. There's a group called Circle of Friends, and it's working to improve the K-12 through experience for children with autism. The program helps create a network of inclusion between students with disabilities and their classmates. And facilitators are trained to help students increase the quality of their social interactions and also prevent bullying, create understanding. Joining me now is Mary Schleter, who is a Circle of Friends facilitator in Omaha. Thank you so much for being here, Mary. Sure. And I want to tell you, she's not just a facilitator. She actually created this program and the model for everyone to use in the area. This mm -hmm. is fantastic. How long ago did you start this? Uh, I would say approximately 15 years ago in Nebraska. What was it that made you say, we need this? Well, I was 14 years old when my cousin, one of my cousins was born, so I was old enough to remember what his childhood was like and I also have a brother about the same age too so there was a lot of back and forth between our houses and um, I, I was very much a part of knowing that he was different he had some special needs but back then we didn't know what autism high functioning autism Asperger syndrome was so um, he, you know, he never really got the social skill training that he needed. As mm -hmm. fate would have it, I was one, a brand new special education teacher and he was my student. And so we focused on academics. We didn't realize you know, what the kind of social skill right. needs that they had. So um, I ended up in Nebraska and had a student years later very much like my cousin. And so I knew that we needed to do things differently for him to open up the social world. And so over the last 15 years, Circle of Friends has just exploded. Mm -hmm. Where is it now? How many schools? Um, I Don't quote me on it, but okay. I think it's like 250-ish students across That's the state amazing. of Nebraska. Yeah. You're impacting all those people. There's so much for families uh, to think about when they have a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, do they feel isolated? Do they feel alone? I think, it's I think it's difficult, yes, mm -hmm. because their student, when they come to school, they know that they love their child. They, have, they know that their child has unique strengths like everyone else does, but sometimes they meet up against obstacles with their peers in school if their peers mm -hmm. don't understand them. And they want the same things for their children, social integration and friends and all those things just like anybody else does. So what is Circle of Friends? Well, it's a form of peer-mediated intervention okay. where we train peers to, we provide an awareness piece so that they understand what autism is, and then we provide opportunities weekly for the kids to get together, and we'll do fun activities, we'll do social skill instruction, sometimes we'll do service learning projects, mm -hmm. and those kind of things so that the kids get to, number one, understand their classmates, 
and their differences, right. but also just to have fun together so they get to know each other and form some friendships. Do you find students who are compassionate who really want to do this kind of work? Yeah, what I find is that when you provide education and information, even to young children, we have, you know, this is a K-12 program in our mm -hmm. public and private schools. It's not just for public right. schools in the area. I find that when you provide education and they understand what makes us all similar, unique differences that kids will interact and be kinder with each other. And it's not just for children who are on the spectrum, mm -hmm. right? Correct. We have what we, we call them our focus students, and those are the kids that we develop the circles for. But we have students with autism, Down syndrome, um, students with ELL, English language learners who maybe are just new to the country mm -hmm. and just learning you know, how to fit in the culture and all those things. So any child that really has a hard time on their own breaking into those social groups, making friends. So not only did you create the model for this program, but now you are spending time training people to create more circles. This is like a domino effect, right? Right, yeah. We started with an eight school pilot program maybe 10 years ago or so. And uh, we do a yearly training now, and the word has spread. We present at the Autism Conference, and people can sign up if they want you know, a group in their school. Okay. We have support through the Autism Action Partnership, which is a nonprofit group in Omaha that has really helped the program a lot mm -hmm. and we've also uh, the autism spectrum disorder ASD network of Nebraska also helps run the program so if you want to be a moderator what do you do um, you just have to sign up right now <laughs> there is sign up season right now okay. our, our new You're training. recruiting <laughs> we're recruiting our new uh, uh, I think it's May 31st we'll have our training for new facilitators okay. so if they go to ASD network uh, circle of friends okay. there's a link there you just click on it and you can sign up it's free doesn't cost anything we offer free training and we also offer regional coaches okay. so that anyone starting a group is able to access that and access help throughout the school year we also have a virtual virtual learning community website where nice. everyone shares what they're doing so there's lots of ideas out there for people. What would your typical circle uh, gathering look like? Well we meet during our school-wide study hall. Some okay. people meet at lunch, some people work, meet before school, after school, whatever works for them. We usually start with a conversation starter. Well, I'll put that up on the screen so the kids can chat while they're waiting. We have snacks for them, so they'll grab a snack. And then we'll just start the activity of the day, whether it's a game, whether it's a, a lesson, how to have a conversation, depending on what our focus and goal is for that day. Right. Do you find that uh, every child, uh, every special needs child, every child on the spectrum can use that social interaction? They, they, do they look for that? They really do. They do they enjoy it? Mm -hmm. I mean, some are reluctant at first because okay. social is not, you know, their preferred activity. Maybe they haven't been successful. But I, all children, all people really crave connection and interaction with others. And so once you provide that for them, they seem, they, they will warm up and they'll, they'll participate. Right. I mean, kids ask all the time, what are we doing this week? What are we doing this oh, week? Oh, they're excited they about it. They are. Yeah. They look forward to it. So mm -hmm. you don't have trouble recruiting children? Oh, for the peer mentors? No. We actually have parents asking us if their children can be peer mentors because they value that experience for their own kids. So we don't have a hard time recruiting. And once a program gets firmly established in a school, it's part of what you do, just like the speech team or the basketball sure. team. Circle of Friends is a well it's a entrenched. Club. It is. Yeah. It's a club in our school that everyone knows about. Perfect. Mm -hmm. What do you want um, parents to know about children on the spectrum? Well, that they're capable of just as much as anybody else is and uh, that schools are here to support them and to help provide their children with what they need because physical inclusion is not the same as social inclusion. Right. Just putting a child in a classroom with mm -hmm. a child that does not have a kind of special need doesn't mean that those kids are interacting. And so I would encourage parents to make sure that that is part of their child's program, right. to ask for it if they don't have it, and to look for those programs in their child's school. And we talked a little bit earlier, but you talked too about how, how to teach children on the spectrum to um, have conversations, to mm -hmm. talk about things that other people are interested in. Mm -hmm. And you practice that, right? We practice it. We videotape it. We examine the videos that we oh make of our conversations. Yeah, we sure do. We do a lot of that. Lots mm -hmm. of practice. Very good. Anything else? I don't think so. Um, I'm happy to help anybody with the Circle of Friends program. The ASD network in Nebraska is there to help. Okay. Um, a lot of resources available. What have you learned over the years? What do you think the most important thing is that you learned? You know, creating this program and educating yourself and now educating others. I think that when you provide information, 
and you provide education to kids about autism or other special needs that they will rise to the occasion and it, it, there's a ripple effect in a building that when you have 10 peer mentors and the rest of the student body watches them interact with kids that maybe no one did before that everyone watches and that ripple effect is very positive right. in and our everybody buildings. learns and benefits mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. thank you so much Mary sure. Appreciate thank you it. Well, life after high school can present new challenges for people with autism. Up next, we look ahead to autism in adulthood. You'll hear about the college program hoping to create fulfilling futures. Welcome back to Chronicle. This morning, we're talking about issues impacting people with autism. One major issue is the high rate of unemployment among adults with autism. Entering the workforce can be a tough obstacle. According to the Bureau of Labor, only 19% of adults with disabilities were employed in 2018. Advocates attribute the low number to a lack of job training opportunities. That's why Dr. Stuart Stoffering decided to create one. Early this month, he debuted two new skills development courses for people with autism and other disabilities at the Nebraska Transition College. KETV Newswatch 7's Jasmine Putney caught up with some of his students and learned why the course is so special to them. to do. Okay. Perspective, so. mindset, strengths, talk about time management and stress, goal setting, and relationships. Instructor Jesse Sandberg is teaching students with disabilities how to unlock their best selves, handing them the keys to a successful future. It can change everything. Jake Dwinell is the only board member with autism at the Nebraska Transition College. I give that kind of perspective of who, um, what they, how they might feel in a certain environment. An aspiring special education para, Jake says he was immediately drawn to the new course Work. Everybody can improve on what they don't know, and I, I, I knew less than I thought I did. Classmate Erin Ziegelbein says she felt the same. I didn't know what good communication skills were, like until now, so just with having that is just been really helpful. Erin was diagnosed with a learning disability in high school. She says it left her feeling like an outsider, but now... I do feel like I'm part of a part of a group and not just not just with people with disabilities, but to others as well. Jake says the transition from childhood to adulthood can be particularly difficult for people with disabilities. You feel like you don't know where you're gonna go or what you're gonna do. Now, Jake says he's still improving because he has the tools to navigate past the obstacles. Every little thing helps, and Nebraska Transition College isn't a little thing, it's a big thing. It is. It means a lot to so many people. The creator of that class, Dr. Stuart Stoffern, is with us now. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. You dressed up so nicely for the show. Yeah, isn't it great? <laughs> yes. It's wonderful, right? Yeah. Uh, we have a, a fundraiser that we're just on the midst, uh, uh, almost going to start here May 1st through the 30th. And here's the poster. You can oh, that's see. you. Yeah, that's red well, jacket, green pants. Well, it's a caricature done of me. Uh, and before <laughs> I knew what was going on, they had colored in the jacket and and then, of course, I had to go out and find yeah, a red jacket and outfit. green pants. And That's I'm just glad awesome. they didn't uh, have the shoes visible because I'm, I'm anticipating <laughs> um, the tennis shoes are going to be comfortable. The, the fundraiser is me giving up my car for a month. Oh, my goodness. Is and, it a nice car? Well, I'm going to appreciate it a whole lot more after 30 <laughs> days of riding the bus. Oh, you'll be riding your, the bus? The bus, your and scooter? that's the reason for the scooter. The ah. nearest bus station is 1.7 miles from my house. And I can walk it, but right. if, if, if I do that once, that's probably enough. This will save me some time okay. to get back and forth. And Make the, sure you wear your helmet, okay? Yes, <laughs> I, I will, absolutely. Yeah, and we can talk more about that or however. I, I love the transition college idea. How did you come up with this? So it started about four years ago, and I had a conversation with my cousin, Cindy. Uh, uh, she has a son who was born uh, in Russia. He, he was adopted from Russia, and he lives with fetal alcohol syndrome. His name is Kyle, and for him it presents a lot like autism. Okay. Uh, he can, you know, he, he's got some struggles with social situations, but academically he's, he's going to graduate on time, and he, he drives, he's got a job. Uh, yeah. But um, for him, it's going to be, he's going to, when he graduates high school, he's going to approach a gap. He's going to approach a cliff, actually, and he's going to see down, and there's going to be this gap between high school and that next step mm -hmm. because he needs a little bit more skills development in social skills, living skills, and work-ready skills. Okay. He would, he's got a verified disability, but uh, he, he's not going to qualify for a lot of state services that sure. are available because he doesn't meet the threshold of being 
disabled enough. Sure, or, he's uh, kind of in between. High right. functioning, mm -hmm. sure. uh, and so, uh, but without some additional skills development in those areas, sure. it's gonna be very difficult for him to find that employment, uh, right. an employment that he very much wishes to have. Right, your courses are things like unlock your best self. What does that mean? So our courses, if you go out to our website, nebraskatransitioncollege.org, mm -hmm. uh, you can look under our programming tab and under our programming tab, you're going to see major curricular streams, is what I call them. Mm -hmm. uh, wellness is one. So okay. unlocking your best self is under wellness. It's kind of like if you think of a math or, or college, and you think math. Well, under there, you're going to have algebra and trigonometry. Okay. So under wellness is the, the major theme class is called unlocking your best self. Okay. And that's the beginning discussion of what, it, what does it mean to be well? Well, there's physical, social, emotional. Mm -hmm. And we start breaking those, those topics down in that class. And there are things you don't necessarily talk about uh, with with your teenagers anyway, right? Like right, I mean, we could take this <laughs> curriculum and put it into every public <laughs> every school uh, because yeah. these these are topics that we just don't right. discuss. We we ex kind of expect people to just to know. just know it, and right. some people do just know it, and some people need that extra help. Right, right. Do you do a lot of uh, role playing and practicing? Yeah. So each curricular stream is going to be broken down into these classes, and and as we progress, we'll be doing more and more of that. Sure. Uh, and there are uh, six or seven different curricular streams, and each one of them uh, will have their own classes under, under each of them. We have two going on right now. Okay. Unlocking Your Best Self is under the wellness, and then Soft Skills to Pay the Bills is under Pre-Vocational Vocational. And that's okay. all about those soft skills necessary to navigate those, those working relationships. Sure. You know, what does it mean to interact with a boss. Sure. You know, and what to say, what, what not to, to say, say, what not to mm -hmm. say, and how to say it. Right. right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of things, uh, nonverbals, that we mm -hmm. need to pick up on uh, that, that aren't really taught. And, and that's uh, where we start going down a pre-vocational vocation. Have you had a lot of interest? We're the new kids on the block. Oh, so nobody knows about you. Well, okay. yeah, we're, we're, right. we're getting into that. Okay. So we have two courses. We, you know, it's one thing to plan these courses uh, around the kitchen table. It's another thing that we got to put them out there sure. and, and try them and see how they, they, they do. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, it was a little slow, uh, but as, as the words started getting out there, more and more students signed up. We have two courses in, in Lincoln, because that's just where I live, and that's where okay. we started this. But in the fall, we're looking to bring those courses to Omaha. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. Um, if people want to sign up for a course or m want more information, yeah. do you have a website set up already? We do, and the courses right now are through, uh, we are offering our courses through Southeast Community College. Okay. They're our courses, but we're offering it through Southeast Community College through a collaborative relationship that we have with them. Okay. Uh, when we come to Omaha, uh, they will be at a different location, but they'll be through our own registration site on our website. Okay. So you're preparing these young people for the next step in life. For most of them, what will that be? Is it college? Is it a job? Is it? It's, it's whatever they want it to be. Okay. And so the first question we ask when we when we talk to prospective students is, what's your thing? What's your niche? Sure. And and then we figure out where that fits because we all have a thing. We all have a niche. Mm -hmm. We all have something that we love to do. So we try to find out through the course of our our classes uh, how that fits and how these students can then use that as uh, as productive work sure. and, and to get paid a full-time wage for it. Is there a wide range of abilities? There, there are. Now, that's the, kind of the tricky part. Okay. So if, if you take a look at the entire spectrum of, of special needs uh, or, or um, disabilities, you know, you have some students who require 24-hour support, and mm -hmm. then you have some students who require very little support, right. uh, but they're still a verified disability. Our curriculum is designed for a very small niche of those students who would be uh, described as high functioning. Okay. Um, and so. Uh, independent living. Independent living. And driving. It's, right. Okay. It's, it's those folks who just need a little bit more skills development in those boost. areas. And then they go on to do whatever they want. It could be work. It could be a, a typical school. It could be both because you and I probably did that. We, we worked and went to school sure. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And some students may not want to go to school and that's okay. There's, there's jobs out there that, that don't necessarily need a degree. You, you just rolled out this program, but is it too early to, to know, or are you seeing some changes in the students you're already working with? Yeah, and so it's not just the students learning, right? It's okay. the instructors. Sure. Yeah, so again, we plan and plan and plan, but until you put it out there and uh, you know, try to make that first step in teaching the curriculum, you don't really know how it's gonna go. Right. So our initial application process and our curriculum and uh, all of the things that we're trying to teach will need to be recalibrated a little sure. bit. Um, it's going very well. Uh, sometimes, you know, we try to teach too much 
because right. we want to teach too much. <laughs> um, and we'll recalibrate that a little bit, and we're going to be offering public forums for folks That's so they awesome. can hear about this is so neat. What went well, mm -hmm. what, what didn't go so well, right. and how we're going to be recalibrating, and where we're going to be offering the classes. Well, I just want to congratulate you for seeing the need and, and pushing forward. Yeah. And I know it's not easy. It takes a lot of courage and <laughs> determination, and you're losing your car and everything. Right for for 30 <laughs> days. And please go out to the website, check it out. You can follow us. So I've got a blog. I'll be telling us stories every single day about That's how fantastic. this is going. We'll have to hook up for a story later on. Yeah. I, I want to see you ride your scooter in that outfit. Right now? No, no. <laughs> Thank you so much, Because I need Stuart. some more practice. <laughs> Appreciate it. Coming up, a local group combining vocational skills with creative expression. They're helping adults with disabilities to unlock their potential in a beautiful way. It's art with a beautiful purpose. A local gallery is empowering artists with special talents. The Art Garden creates an environment for adults with autism to thrive and help them sell their work. It's a place packed with texture, color, and life. It's very um, calming, therapeutic. And I just let my hand move. I kind of get lost. I just let my hand move. Creativity guides Alex's hands. An inner gift just waiting to be revealed. It's a happy place. The art garden is Alex Johnson's happy place, along with dozens of other clients with the Autism Center of Nebraska. They lived in our hearts to stay. It's an art workshop for adults living with autism. It's also a store to sell their creations. And just like a freshly planted garden, we really do believe everybody can learn and grow, and I think that uh, the art garden kind of symbolizes that, is that um, this is about growth. And then we just sanded it down. So did you go home with paint on your hands? Yes, I got it right now. <laughs> with paint and guidance, he's making progress. He's also expressing himself in ways that he really probably never had an opportunity to in the past. The texture in there, I actually beat myself. I've seen him grow with the choices he makes. They're adults open to learning critical thinking, leadership, and conversation skills. And being able to, to interact with everybody uh, in a positive way and, and uh, using learning coping skills when something doesn't go his way. Each stretching past their skill sets to paint, cut, and roll recycled paper. So how many people, how many clients could have possibly touched this piece to make it, to make all it happen? All of them, all of them could wow. have. Um, because almost everybody does, makes the paper. Artwork touched by the community, for the community. What a cool place. The Art Garden is sponsored by a grant from the Enrichment Foundation. You can shop there at 91st and Q from 10.30 to 3.30 weekdays. And you're invited to the May 4th Gala for the Autism Center of Nebraska. Go to their website for tickets. Well, some experts say early intervention can help children with autism be prepared to enter the workforce later in life. And now doctors say eye tracking technology gives them more information when screening children at higher risk for autism. And the use of technology goes beyond diagnosis. There are also programs to help children with autism communicate better. Nonverbal children can use speech generating apps where they press pictures and the app speaks for them, helping them to communicate their wants and needs. And while most of the technology is very new, health experts say they're excited about the possibilities of using it to help young people with autism. If you want to learn more about autism and the support available in Nebraska, you can check out any of the organizations listed on your screen. They offer a variety of resources for families, of people with autism, helping them live full and positive lives. And a reminder that your comments are always an important part of the show. You can contact us, email your comments to news at KETV.com. If you missed any part of the show or you want to watch it again, check it out online at KETV.com. Go to our homepage and click on the menu button. It's there on the left. And then look for Chronicle. I'm Julie Cornell. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning. For KETV Newswatch 7's Chronicle.